All right, guys, welcome to this episode. And today is all about prepping our dogs for the hunting season. This is something that we live for. Hunting season is just about here. And it's really important that we start preparing not only ourselves, but our dogs. Now, a lot of you may be saying, well, we run them quite a bit and everything else, but let's be honest, when we hit the field, they hunt really, really hard. Um, my dogs specifically, that's gonna start here in September. So we have just about five weeks to kind of get them into some pretty good shape. Um, this is going to include cardiovascular, uh, building muscle and starting to work that muscle a little bit more so that they don't have so much uh, stiffness or soreness after a long day of hunting. And then most importantly, probably equally importantly, we need to talk about their pads. This is probably, let's go with most importantly because it's one of the number one things that people say. Hey, we went on this hunt this weekend and my dog ran its pads off. Now what do we do? Well, what do you do now is take a step back about five weeks and had better prepared pads coming into that day and you would be ready to go hunting again. Now, what can happen, it's just like a blister for us, right? Not used to running a shovel, you pick that shovel up and work for a hard day, you're gonna have blisters all over your hands. But if you work that shovel every day of the week or at least four or five days of the week for a good month, you're gonna build up some calluses and we need to be able to do that with the, the dog's pads themselves. So. If this is your first time to the channel, guys, definitely hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our upcoming content. Now, one way and the main way that we do this is via roading. I have our roading harness here. This is designed to fit over the dogs and we're gonna show you how to fit this here in a minute. This is designed to fit over the dog's head. We have a single riveted spot here that allows this to pivot open and close just a little bit so that this will fit better around bigger dogs necks and over their shoulders so you've got a little bit of play flexibility there and then we have one strap that goes over their back this is going to come back to our chain and then we have our under the chest ish band with dual adjustability so that it can fit a very large number of dogs now this i've seen on Ooh, a little Brock Francais that weighed about 40 pounds-ish, maybe a little less than that. Um, this even fit down to that size and then all the way up to some bigger dogs like uh, Nix is one of our bigger dogs, big deep chest, and this fits him no problem as well. And he weighs, give or take, 65 to approaching 70 pounds. So um, we have a webbing, it's a, a neoprene, mesh here with padding inside of it to add some comfort level in that pulling area. But uh, all of the hardware then is stainless steel like all of the products that we make here. Now, we're gonna throw this harness on the dog and I'll show you how to fit that here in just a second, but then we're going to road. We put together a couple other videos on this, more showing how to teach your dog, why, talking a little bit about why it's important, but this video specifically is gonna talk about the workout plan because these guys are athletes it is a a hunting it is a workout regiment if you will um we i'm going to cover exactly what we plan to do over the next five weeks and then it's about eight and a half nine weeks rolling into south dakota hunting for me guiding and that is drastically harder than our early season hunt is going to be for the dogs so we have just about two full well just over two full months to prepare them for that so what we're going to be doing right now, starting off, is these guys are coming out of summer, it's been hot. They have not been working that hard. Um, they've gotten a few runs in, but we will start three days a week and we will be doing one mile. We wanna start them off slow so that we don't end up running their pads off, even if they can keep up. You know, we have to be our dog's advocates. They're gonna try and keep going. They wanna work, they wanna do it but we have to start slow. If we start too slow, we're not gonna make enough progress, but if we start too fast, we'll run pads off and then we may be sitting, ooh, two, three weeks for those to heal up completely that we can't be running them. So we don't want that. Three days a week, they're gonna run one mile. Now our driveway is rocked, has a rock and sand base to it. This is very important. If you're going to be roading on concrete, you need to be careful. That's gonna be a lot easier for them to, to wear their pads off as well as that concrete this time of year can get really hot. 
So watch that. But if you can get on a gravel or sand road, it's gonna really help to build tougher pads so that you don't run into these issues. Now, week one, we're going to do three days a week. Week two, we're going to do three days a week, but we're gonna add an extra approximately half a mile. We're gonna gradually build up to this. In our third week, we will move into two full miles down and back. And then in our fourth week, we will be had three solid weeks of conditioning and we'll go up to most likely four to five miles, depending on them. I'm not worried about pads anymore. We're gonna to start to push that conditioning and start to push that cardiovascular a little bit in that fourth week. That'll be four or five miles. Um, and then we'll be coming out of that probably right into our first hunting trip of the year, which is gonna be Montana. Um, those are big rolling hills, grasslands, primarily where we were at before. Um, so we don't have much to worry about as far as rocky territory. If you get into some rough, rocky territory, you can end up with being a little more careful with those pads. Um, but then once we come back from that trip, we'll be able to evaluate where they're at um, and from that standpoint, we'll go from that four days a week to we'll move over into five days a week of that four to five miles a day. I don't typically go any further than that four to five mile mark because they are pulling a little bit at the same time and that works them harder than actually just running or free running. So I've never seen a benefit, a true benefit into moving into that um, much beyond about five miles. The then that last month, they're going to run five days a week straight. And the reason for that is we basically guide three straight weeks in South Dakota and those dogs work hard. And this is a really, really good way to prepare them for that. So that's our basic regiment. Again, it's gonna be three days a week, three days a week, three days a week, and then four days a week, I believe is exactly what I said. Moving from one mile up into um, a two mile run and then as working at the top end of that into four and five miles, getting a little, I should have wrote this down so I could have reviewed it while I'm looking at it here. Um, but then once we get through that first hunting trip, then we move into a solid five days a week, four to five miles, and you have to read your dog. They're gonna come out. Some days they're gonna be stronger and ready for that fifth mile. Some days they're gonna be a little more tired. It could be just a couple degrees warmer, something could be changing that way, and you have to read them. If they're saying, I'm done at four, you need to be done. So let's go ahead and get him up here and we will fit this and I'll show you what that looks like. Stand up, buddy. So this part, first of all, goes over his head and that's gonna sit right here. Okay, it's gonna sit right here on his shoulders. Good. Then we're gonna take, you just have to do one side but we're gonna run this underneath and then we're gonna balance it out. So you wanna, you wanna be adjusting both sides, don't just cinch up one. And here we've got two holes available and on this side we've got three holes available. You want this to be able to just barely fit your hand underneath there, but it's fairly snug. You don't want this to be restricting where we're like cinched up on his chest. It needs to have some freedom under there, but not so sloppy that, um, you know that it's not doing anything support wise. So we're as even about as we can be. And then this will hook up to our chain system and he's ready to go. It sits up high, so it's not down here restricting shoulder movement or anything to that effect. It sits up here, here right up here on his neck. But, all right, buddy. So folks, this is going to be our setup, our workout regimen for these guys making sure that we can get up to that four to five mile mark by our first trip in Montana, but taking it slow enough that we don't run pads off. And then they get their butts worked off that last month coming into our South Dakota guiding season. So let's take a minute here. I'm gonna show you what some of this roading stuff looks like. And from there, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below and we will see you this hunting season. <music>